five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello and welcome everyone to Truth, Beer, and Podsequences. So this is the podcast where my co-host and I get together every week at a podcast host. Today we are back at our podcast home, Higher Gravity Summit Park. And what we do is we give our version of the truth of all the Cincinnati-based craft beer podcasts from last week. Now hopefully there aren't too many consequences from the host of the other podcasts. So far so good, but we'll see. Uh, I am Marco. I am a taproom manager here locally, and I'm about to introduce the best co-host in Podcast Landia. I am Julia, and I am the best co-host in Podcast Landia. True. And yeah, that's all I need to say. No, I, <laughs> I am. We literally. also are the number one craft beer podcast, podcast that talks about Cincinnati-based craft beer podcasts. It's true. So it thank you, everyone. True. Thank you, thank you, thank you for bigger making than this. Oprah's craft beer podcast that talks about Cincinnati-based craft beer podcasts. It's true. It's true. We are we are number one. Unfortunately, we no longer hit number one up in Canada. Rip to a uh, Newport Report. Yeah. I miss those guys. I they were too. awesome. Hopefully, they're doing well up there. Uh, but but yeah, we we talk about all of the previous week's uh, podcast, Crip Beer Podcast, and I have to say as. This is these. This is my thought on the number of those craft beer podcasts that we had the pleasure of listening to. Disappointed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We have uh, we have two. But you know what? Yeah. That means that we can talk three times as long as each podcast episode. I was, was just gonna say <laughs> we can go ahead and double or triple the amount of time that we listen. That we need to absolutely. Yeah, by absolutely. talking about them. But you know what? Before we even get into that, I want to say that anything we say on this podcast are the opinions of Marco and myself alone. They are not the opinions, thoughts. They do not represent or reflect anything of any entity that we are a part of, jobs, companies, even higher gravity. This is 100% us. So if we say something you don't like, at us, don't at anyone else. Correct. Period. Correct. Or, or, well, there is one other person you can at if you're upset with something. We yeah, do. if you're upset with something or you're just disappointed. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me do this. Disappointed! With something that we say, mm-hmm. you can send that to... At Raging Hop on Twitter. Yeah, there you and go. And he may or may not let us know about it. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, but no craft beer podcast would be a good one if they weren't having craft beer. Mm-hmm. And we are having craft beer. So, oh, yeah, uh, Julia, are. ladies first, what are you drinking? I am just drinking from Ryan Geis, their Juicy Truth. Ah, Juicy Truth. Yes, yes. So normally truth is your thing. Juicy Truth might be. That's kind of hard to say. It's kind of like Juicy Fruit gum. Yeah. Juicy Truth, Juicy, juicy Fruit. I'm Ju- going to stumble juicy over truth. that a little bit. Juicy Fruit. It is, it is pretty dang on good. I think that I like regular truth better, but this is a really well done version of it so i'm not i'm i'm not mad you know me julia you know I you know, know i know me and truth uh and i love truth uh, that was that was tasty yeah. um but i'm i'm more of a, a classic when it comes to my uh my truth sounds so. sounds good it's always good to, to be true to your truth yeah yeah what are you drinking i'm having it's called uh, saint fatty's uh, Irish style red ale. Uh, this is from Fatheads. Nice. So uh, yeah, it's uh, very good. We're into that, into that, uh, creeping into that season. We are. Um, it's not seasonably uh, creeping. <laughs> it's just we it's are just creeping into that season. So Correct. yeah, that's good. An Irish style red ale. Good. It's a great color. Yeah. The people on the live stream, uh, hopefully they can they can appreciate yeah. the stuff that you know you're not seeing because we're not. We're still working on the live stream. I promise. We're gonna work, we're, we're gonna, gonna try again. It. We're gonna try it. We're, we're gonna we're definitely try again. working on it. We are we are one misunderstanding away from getting it to work. Yeah. That that I am pretty certain of. Um, before we get into the podcast, I have a little bit of of uh, not an achievement, but we've hit kind of another milestone in the podcast. Let's do it. I am at the end of my second notebook of notes for this podcast. These recaps took me up to the last page. So this notebook has taken me from April 19th of 2022, episode 38, through today, episode 77. What day was our first pod released? Oh, shit. Uh, You know, 
that that the day that it was, I remember the day that it was released. Oh yeah, I remember. It was the day. You it was know? a Friday too, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. It was. It used to be released kind of in the evenings because I would try to rut, edit it after work mm-hmm. on Friday and then push it out as soon as it was done. And uh, now I don't. I don't procrastinate as much. So now it comes out first thing Friday morning. Well, and there's a little, I mean, the equipment purchase upgrades and things, a lot of things. Have the familiarity been, of, of what we're doing and all that, yeah. Right. Yeah, certainly, certainly, certainly helped. Certainly but helps with my ease of getting that podcast out. True that. True that. <laughs> You're the best. But Julia. yeah, so I'm going to The gonna best need, co-host in podcast landia. So I'm going to need to buy a new notebook. So thank you to our Patreon subscribers yes, for allowing you. that to happen. And we will let you guys know how to support us uh, at the end of the episode. No mm-hmm. need to bore you with that no, now. No, we can, we can yeah, just yeah. get into what we do's. Well, what we do is, is we recap podcasts. And uh, as, as we kind of started, we only have two podcasts to talk about this week. So let's just make sure that our notes match. I mean, I don't, why, would they, why would they not match up? Our notes no are idea. pretty much exactly the same. We have Cincy Brewcast, where mm-hmm. Noam talked uh, to Jason Brewer with Wandering Monsters. Yep. Awesome. And then What You Into yep. with Anthony Tank Mansfield, which isn't necessarily a craft beer podcast, but he is doing a super, super cool thing mm-hmm. where this is the second episode in a six-part series where he is talking to people from High Gain, High, high Gain? Yeah. High Grain Brewing. Uh, about both the brewery and what is kind of the focus of his podcast, their hobbies, the things that they're interested in. So we're going to cover mostly the brewery talk of the episode, but right. touch on a couple other points from the episode as a whole. So That's what I got. That's what we got. I'm I mean, I listen to a bunch of other stuff. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, God, so yeah. much stuff. We uh, could do a whole bonus episode or even Patreon we episode might. about... Other things that we listen to and watch. We, we, we should. We should. We, we should. should do that. We should totally do that. Uh, but yes, those are the Cincinnati-based ones that I listen to this week. All right. Well, which one would you like to start with? Uh, let's start with what are you into? What okay. you, What you into? What I don't want to. I don't want to keep mispronouncing the name. Is what you into? True. Um, and I will say that he has posted, and when I say he, we're going to say Tank because that's kind of the. The not, not persona, but that's sort of the nickname that he does tend to refer to himself as. Uh, he is going to be doing a live episode of What You Into at High Grain Brewing on February the 9th. And I just realized that I forgot to add that to our calendar sheet, but I will do that for the next episode. I did not see a time posted for that, but when we know what time he'll be doing that, I'll update everyone. For now, we're just going to assume it's from the time they open and the time, the time they, they close. close. It's just going to be an all-day session. Right. Yeah, I mean, why would And then we'll pare it down from there Absolutely. if they if they actually have a shorter time frame. <laughs> All right. So this episode, this this was also a pretty big deal episode-wise. For Tank. For Tank. Yeah. So this is episode 100 of What You Into. Oh. So huge, huge, huge congratulations for that milestone. Uh, I mean, I think that, we, that that deserves... So. All right. Everybody here at Higher Gravity, congratulating. He's standing up and giving. I mean, it was a did. full standing ovation, and this place is kind of packed tonight. It's like the Kennedy Center Honors or something. I know. I know. So Wonderful. congratulations, Tank, on episode 100. Uh, this episode's title is Finding More Times to Go Fast with Brian Liscan- Liscano, I believe is the correct pronunciation. Liscano. He always said his last name like twice through the whole episode, so my apologies if I mess that up. Uh, he is the CO, COO and one of the co, co, co-owners. co Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Co- I think I started to co-owner. say co-founder and co-founder. owner all in the same word, co- and that just kind of blended together. Uh, and, and he does a lot of, of running the front of the house and some accounting stuff and some things that, you know, might not be as cool as other jobs in the brewery but they're much more necessary and if the bills don't get paid the beer can't be poor so thank you to brian for everything that he does at high grain heard that jesus <laughs> uh, there were really a couple of really cool things that he touched on um the the brewery talk of this episode was only about 14 15 minutes so we don't have a ton to talk about but we absolutely wanted to give a shout out because we both love high grain they make absolutely amazing beer their space is phenomenal if you've never been there get there Uh, planning is key when it comes to both events and as he mentioned on the episode new locations yes high grain will be opening up a second location and it was very cool listening to him talk about 
how because of that he now has to be better at separating himself from his current role you know letting his right. team do the work right i mean he even said it do. it's like yeah, he can't yeah, yeah. be at two places at one time mm-hmm. so that you're gonna have to find people you can trust and he has those people and they've had uh, uh, team members in place since the very beginning that have right. grown and grown into roles so that's pretty cool uh they didn't mention it in this pod in within the first 14 15 minutes but that second location that's west side isn't it uh oh. It's more West Side than their current location. It's where they had the Brentwood Bowl. Yeah, there was a bowling is. alley, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, the old Brentwood, Brentwood Bowl location. But I don't think it's going to stay a bowling alley, is no, it? No, 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 that, that Brentwood Bowl has been closed for a while, so it's not going to have any bowling aspect to it whatsoever. I mean, unless no they bowling. change something. As far as I know, no bowling. Okay. Could be a missed opportunity for them. It's maybe, possible. I mean, who knows? Maybe they have plans to keep a couple lanes open to rent out. I don't know. I don't we'll know. just we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah. I'm very excited about it. Uh, let's see. The really the only other note I had on the brewery part of the conversation uh, is consistent beers are a better focus than hype beers. Yes, hype beers are great. They get kind of the crowds in because, oh, I want to try the newest, you know, hazy IPA, you know, milkshake or the stout with 15 million adjuncts in it and all that. And if you're the kind of brewery that can keep churning out variant after variant of those, cool. But High Grain wants to focus on just consistently good beers and not just, we're going to put out a good beer that's all the rage. We're going to put out a good beer that you always want to go back to. So and I really like that. Like there are pilsners and lagers. There are fantastic. Killer. They're amazing. Fantastic. I I do I do think there's a lot to dig into there uh, with that. Mm-hmm. I think that there's two different models. I think there's a distribution model. I think that there's a taproom model. Mm-hmm. And I think that in distribution, that what's going to force your hand on what what you sell mm-hmm. is what the vendors you're selling to want to sell sure. and what they say the people want. Mm-hmm. Um, but in inside your tap room, which is going to be the, the, the much more the lucrative way mm-hmm. uh, to, to sell. And there's a, another tangent I want to go off of there as well. Sure, sure. Uh, the much more lucru- lucrative way to sell your beer is that may be a different model as well. You know, something that sells out very quickly, that's a hype beer, uh, is going to, on draft, maybe stick around a long time mm-hmm. and, and not be uh, as as rapid to sell through, right? Yeah. And the other thing is they talked about the fact that, uh, no, excuse me, I'm going to hold that. I'm going to hold that because I All think right. that note is for the next podcast. Ah, uh-huh. okay. All right. Okay. So, that's, that's fair. But there, there still is the understanding that even though it's fun, even though you have a job in beer, even though he's a founder and he's got a great team, uh, it's still important to make sure you're making the right decisions for the business so the business can keep growing. Sure. The, they take, they take all of that, um, all oh, that's heart very seriously. Yeah. So, and then they get into the hobby talk. Right, which, which again, the, these are always really great episodes. Tank has a way of engaging conversation with all of his guests that, and I've said this before on, I think, last week's episode when we talked about, I'll just say episode one of the High Grain series of What You Into. But I've also mentioned it on other episodes of What You Into that we've covered when they have had something of a beer focus to them. He is such a good conversationalist with his guests that all the conversations, even if it's something you're not really into or not sure if you would enjoy or not, they're amazing to listen to, hands down. So I just wanted to kind of pull out a couple. Did you go to the, wasn't Tank doing a live um, artist thing at Westside or something? He did. I wasn't able to make it. Oh, you didn't make it? Yeah. Okay. I, I, he might be doing another one in the future, and I definitely want to try to go to one of those with six bomb boards. Uh, but no, the one that he did at High Grain, just timing wise, I wasn't able to to get up there to check that out. So I'm definitely I it was going at West to. Side. Maybe it was. Well, at High he, Grain. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The one that the one at West Side. I think okay. he has done or is going to do one at High Grain as well. Tank, let us know. Correct us on all. Yeah, of this hit stuff. us up, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Miss you, man. Yeah. I used yeah, to. Yeah, Marco used to serve him beer. I used to pour 
tank beers. <laughs> now he's just going to high grain all the time, and, yeah. and no one ever sees him. Well, and I'm not behind the bar here. That's true. So. That's true. He could show up on a Tuesday. He could. He could yeah. show up on a Tuesday. Yeah. There we go. Hit us up, Tank. Show up on a Tuesday. We'll give you a mic, buddy. So I have a couple of, of fun talking points about the hobby section of the yes, episode. Yes, of course. And then... I have a multiple choice question. Ah, um, oh, multiple what? You have a what? choice, yes. So the, okay. the little talking points that I have, uh, it was about racing, um, mostly autocross it sounded like, which I'm, I'm still not a, I don't, I don't want to say that I'm into racing now, but because of Tank's podcast, I'm watching the Drive to Survive F1 series on Netflix, which is F1's ridiculously crazy. fun. Um, but I, I'm still not 100% on like autocross and, and the, the different crosses, the different racing types uh, but cars have always been in the family like professionally whether it's a, a body shop racing that type of thing so brian has always been around that that um, that environment he was allowed to hold the flashlight by the time he was eight when he was helping his dad uh, with like good. car stuff yeah. because that's a big question at what age are you given the responsibility of holding the flashlight well it also harkens back to you know a nice holiday movie that all of us probably were you know reminded of coming out of the christmas True. season where you wanted to help your dad with an auto mm -hmm. sort of thing mm -hmm. so yeah it's a big deal when you can help dad the flashlight. when you can help dad doing you know uh dad things i imagine it's sort of uh, something similar when youth uh, you know the children are able to help you with your uh you know mashing mm -hmm. in as a home brewer or maybe you know stirring something or you know i i th there was a time where my kids when they were uh, super young helped me bottle uh some beer and my son vincent went to the brewery and and helped stir the mash nice. commercially you know nice. so it was pretty cool yeah. I, I get it yeah uh, there is an amazing 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 story about his grandpa and his leg. So 100% worth the listen, if nothing else, just for that. Uh, they talked about how your vehicle is or can be an extension of your personality. And so they got into if you could pick a car or, uh, you know, a couple cars that would reflect your personality, what would they be? And that was pretty cool. And then you can also hear about how a remote-controlled Batmobile made a grown man cry, which... It's was beautiful. pretty spectacular. It's beautiful. Pretty spectacular. Uh, that's all that the notes that I had because again the main beer brewery section of the podcast was just the first fifteen minutes in the beginning. But they're such great episodes, we wanted to make sure that we touched on more than just that. Uh, but I do have a multiple choice question for this episode. Hell yeah! All right, are uh, are you ready to try to answer this question? Born ready, Julia. All right. What was the best advice that Brian gave that works for both a brewery and for racing? That is so beyond dramatic, and I that's, love it. That's great. Is it A, don't kill yourself in the process? Is it B, always have a leg to stand on? Or is it C, nothing is impossible, including supercharging a Yaris? Or is it D, Julia? You know I bring the D. <laughs> I'd be upset if you didn't. <laughs> bring the D. Or I'd, I'd, be, I'd be worried if you didn't. I guess it's no, probably I bring better. the D. When you're talking with cars, mullets are a must. The bigger the hair, the closer <laughs> to God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is fantastic. That is our recap for Season 3, Episode 100. Hell, yeah. Congratulations. Of what you into. Uh how are you on your beer market? You're starting to get a little, a little low there. Do you want to take a quick break? I think with only having one more podcast to cover, I'll go ahead and, uh, you know. You, will you have enough for a cheers at the end, though? No, no, no. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying is I'm going to go ahead and polish this off. Gotcha. I grab gotcha. a freshie, yeah. and then we'll go ahead and do the last podcast. We're going we're gonna to cover when we come back from our break of the Cincinnati Brewcast. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Stick with us, guys. We'll be right back. We have made it back. And I have the same beer because, you know, why not? And Marco has a gorgeous looking fresh beer in his class. Uh, yeah. What you got? What you drinking there? I have. I picked this beer on purpose, Julia. Ooh. It correlates to the podcast we're about to talk about uh, or a segment of the podcast. Okay. We're about okay. Tell me to more. Talk about. Tell me more. 
It is uh, lunch from Maine Brewing Company. Such a great beer. We need to cheers to that great beer. And the dogs are cheering you on as well. We are getting all kinds. It's crazy. Of Sam Hubbard just walked in. <laughs> and the dogs are just going nuts. <laughs> yes. We are getting all kinds of wonderful four legged friends here. And that's one of the things that I love about Higher Gravity, either location, is getting to see amazing pupper dogs. Yeah. Every single time that we're here. Although I haven't seen Damon yet tonight, so I am a little bit, uh, how, how do I say? I need to up the volume on that, uh, on that button. So, um, you guys are just going to have to deal with a little bit quiet unless I can bump it up in post, which I may or may not do because of the dog noises in the background, uh, but you all know what, we're, what, what, what I mean. You got, you got what we're talking about. Yes. Uh, let's, let's jump into Cincy Brewcast season eight, episode 34, Wandering Monsters, the next needed thing. Yeah. Next, next to some more uh, chicken restaurants on uh, out in Anderson. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. This episode was kind of a long time coming. So you had Jason Brewer uh, on as the guest. Yeah, uh, you should. If you don't know that name, you should. Yeah, he was the, I guess, general manager mm-hmm. at Listerman. Yeah. And then yeah. left Listerman, went to Hoppin Vines yep. and. You know, he took his time. The the name Wandering Monster came around from a little bit of, you know, what thinking about his life at the time and mm-hmm. his kids and, you know, what he had done and what he wants to do. And for a while, I mean, he did this, he did this sort of uh, like Miss Chloe business where he goes, <laughs> I can sit down with you and talk for five minutes and tell you what's wrong with your brewery. Oh, Call my me now. <laughs> Call Jason Brewer. 1-800-JASON-BREWER. That's Call me now. <laughs> it's like, was it, is that a Irish or Jamaican? That, why not both? Okay. Why not both? Bit, like, so he, Jamaican he took, on one side of the family, took, Irish on the other. Blend. Took blend a little bit together. of time to let you know, look, I if you call <laughs> me now, I can talk five minutes and tell you what's wrong with your craft brewery. Oh, my goodness. All right. This was. This is going to be a new brewery in the Anderson area. Uh, never heard of it. Never heard of it. Well, no, because it doesn't exist yet. Or are we talking about Anderson? You've never heard of Anderson. Anderson, never heard. Oh, uh, yeah. It's it's kind of on the opposite side of the universe for you. So not surprising. But so you've never been out to Paradise, either Paradise location, Paradise Brewing, out there. But one's one's okay out near Eastgate, right? Yes. And the other and one's nowhere near Eastgate. <laughs> that, yes, I'm also glad. nowhere near <laughs> I, where I so, am. So basically, they're downtown, <laughs> as, as as the Justins speak. Yeah, more or less. Check out uh, early episodes of Sonder Stories for some of that fun. Okay, uh, we're we're kind of going all kinds of willy nilly on this one. Why does the logo look like they just stole a Monsters Inc. monster and then just turned it into a hop leaf? Uh, you know it's. Well, I, I guess my question... That's a Billy Crystal character, and then just, they just <laughs> turned him into a hop. <laughs> they're, they're, I'm sure there's more than one. I'm sure there's more than just the Billy Crystal. Yes, they made monster. another one. I mean... <laughs> so they couldn't get... Uh, the voice is not going to be Billy what, Crystal. No. Maybe they can get Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh, maybe. Yeah. What I want to know... Billy Hamilton. Th- this Okay, so this recap is not starting off... In, in any, with any uh, Billy stru- strings. structure to it in any way, shape, or form. Famous so, Billy's top five, go. No, not doing it. Okay. What I want to ask you is, when it comes to brewery, monster, I'm going to say icons. Okay. Who would win, even though they're not open yet, even though Wandering Monsters isn't open yet. Yeah. Who would win? Would it be the Wandering Monster Monster? Or would it be the Nine Giant Monster? Because Nine Giant has that amazing story about right. kind of the giants, the monsters. Who do you think would win, or is it too early to tell? Well, you can't win when you're not open. Fair, that, so that's, that's the way fair. I feel okay. about it. So maybe once we, they're open, let's revisit them. We, they can, you know, yeah, yeah. have a have a monster it off. Could be like a Pokemon evolution of the Wandering Monster Monster, and who knows? It may end up being a Juggernaut. You never know, right? You never knew. <laughs> All right. So Got one, a of the, guy one of the used first to work things. With. Yeah. His high school mas- uh, mascot was the Juggernaut. Really? That was in in Kentucky. Could... All right. I was like, "What the fuck is a Juggernaut?" And he's like, "It's it's 
It's an unstoppable force. I'm like, stop it. So what 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 does an unstoppable force look like? How do you personify that? Let's get back to this episode because we really, you you covered a good portion in kind of your intro to it. Awesome. But I want to dig into some of those points a little bit more than than what we've been doing. In this conversation, the idea came up or it was discussed that it may no longer be good enough to open just a tap room or just a brewery. You have to have something more to it. You have to have food. You have to have some type of potentially entertainment value. And that's what Jason is trying to create with Wandering Monsters, not just a brewery. And they even said kind of later on in the show... The brewery is kind of taking a back seat. They're still going to make sure that they make amazing beer, but the focus is going to need to be on the other parts of of the space and not just the beer with other things like food and any type of entertainment because there's going to be duck pin bowling in this space, which they really didn't touch on much at all, I feel like, um, for something that's going to be one of the key focal attractions for the space. I don't know. Does that make sense? So, no, they don't have to do any of that. But that doesn't mean that they're going to succeed. What he, what his point was, I think overall, when he in this evolution of, you know, the past mm-hmm. eight years, ten years in craft beer, going from uh, you could only have a production space to production space and tap room, and then tap room to. Uh, tap room means food and tap room means entertainment. And so he's saying, look, what we need to do, and certainly coming out of the pandemic, what we need to do is make sure if we're going to, if we're going to open a business, it's going to be a brewery, mm-hmm. a restaurant, and we're going to have a, a thing, a next thing, yeah, yeah, an yeah. activity of some sort. And so, and what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that all of these things the, the the food, the activity, the beer, all these things are treated as even planes so that if one thing is more successful at any given time of the year, we can always sustain ourselves as a business. And that's fine. I think that's a, a perfectly logical way of going about it in this sure. time space. And I think that that was worded much better than what I was trying to do with pretty much the same sentiment. If you're going to open a brewery today and you're going to decide that you're going to have corrugated metal panels Mm -hmm. and you're going to have um, uh, a stereotypical stereotypical uh, stereotypical metal chairs and, you know, everything, the stools and, you know, everything that went into making a brewery a brewery where it's, you know, an industrial space Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. you know, the acoustics suck and, you know, the all that sort of brewery starter kit stuff Mm -hmm. back from, you know, 10 years ago, eight years ago, probably are setting yourself up to have to pivot. And I hate using the word pivot or or have to reassess your business model Mm -hmm. uh, very early into entry. And so this is, this is his way of coming about it to be a, an entertainment space. Yes. And as an entertainment space that also creates craft beer, Mm -hmm. then there's, there's a, uh, there's a niche that they have in the market that hopefully is sustainable for a very long time because you can be somebody's fun space to go out and have an hour of fun with, your friends, your family, your kids. Mm -hmm. You can be your fun space to go and sit and have dinner and have great craft beer. Mm -hmm. It can be your fun space when they're having a special release to go stand in line and grab their whatever it is, their their, uh, lactose uh, lager or whatever it is, their (laughs) lactose hazy lager or whatever he's going to put out. Uh, And then, you know, it's it's the space where you can go in and grab... Uh, a little bit dinner to go and then go home and, you know, maybe... Or sit maybe, in and have, you know, maybe not the most, you know, upscale of dining experiences, but you can sit down and have a nice dinner. Of course. Right, right. There are there are a lot of different... So, 
So that yes, and I, I don't mean to cut you off, but no, that's, no, you're good. that's that's his concept. His concept is we're we're going to be this space where you can have these experiences, mm-hmm. and it's welcoming, it's opening. Um, they're going to have wine. They're going right. to have you know they're going to have liquor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Trying uh, to make it a one-stop shop that no matter what kind of experience, and this is you can have this parties. Is, this and, is paraphrasing what you just said. No matter what kind of experience you're looking for, time out with the family, just to sit around with some coworkers and have a couple a couple drinks after work, you know, a, a dining experience. They're trying to be able to meet all of all of those needs. Any any situation that you want to have yourself in, Wandering Monster is going to be that place for you to go. Yep. Cool. With Jason Brewer, mm-hmm. who, I mean, in the Cincinnati craft beer scene, people know him for oh, yeah. Yeah. what he did to grow Listerman's business. Mm-hmm. And a brewer that apparently he's hired, knows who it is, and didn't want to talk about it at the time. Right. That's fine. Leave That's a fine. Bit of mystery it's his, to it. Whatever. Yeah. Um, and. It's his you know, news to share when he wants to share it. And, Nothing wrong with that. You know, hasn't decided to release whatever you know that that food style or, or whatever is going to be. And that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but I I do think that. Well, having, we know the food style. We don't know the the culinary partner, right? Because they definitely talked about the food that's going to be in in Wandering Monster. But I think that a lot of the names of the people that are going to be involved are still being held back for future release as we get closer to the brewery's opening date, which he's hoping is going to be early summer. Because the building was a bar Mm -hmm. and has an outdoor space already. Huge And the draft lines are in place already. And he talked uh, several times. I don't call it like a turnkey building, but yeah. No, he talked several times about the, you know, the... The mechanics of the building, the HVAC furnace, all those things are already in place. The sprinkler right. system's in place. The the bar, the draft lines are in place. Right. So he's going to be able to reallocate or just, you know, change over funds and the things instead of putting funds into that uh, as much as he was going to do. Because I, sure. what yeah, I would yeah. say is that, I mean, obviously, uh, it's not – those systems still need to be vetted, checked. They still need to be – they still need to be inspected mm-hmm. the, and the draft system. I don't know how long it's not been in operation, but I'm sure the draft system needs some, some, uh, some TLC, sure, sure. uh, which and it can be relatively inexpensive, mm-hmm. uh, depending on what's doing? going on with it. Uh, you know, hell your, your head brewer may be able to take on that or you may have a company that you're going to do um, repeat business with to, to take care of your I mean, there may be draft another, line systems. There may be another head brewer in the area at another local brewery that almost started a business all about cleaning draft lines that uh, that you can check with for uh, for what you should look for and, and, and who to go to. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure that, you know, Jason's so, been in the industry for a long time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sure he already has We're not going to teach that guy anything. No. <laughs> uh, let's see. A couple of the things about the brewery space. They're starting with a 10-barrel system. Mm-hmm. So they're going to be able to do a, a decent amount with that. So that's going to be pretty it's cool. It's a good amount of beer. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Uh, the the seating in the location are going to be chairs with backs because his wife said, I'm sorry, but I'm not doing a bar stool. So, hey, I appreciate that. True that. So shout out to, to Jason's wife there. And then we got into the Manscaped ad. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of balls going on in that ad. Especially just coming out of New Year, it's like they... They really dropped the ball on that one. Ah. You know? Ah. Was it Manscaped or was it Gnome that dropped the ball? As Sounds far like it was as scripted. It, 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 which is fine. Yeah. Because you still get Gnome's delivery on it, and it is always... And I'm sure that he picks the music that he puts behind it. I would imagine I, it does. It sounds so weird to say, but I always really enjoy listening to like the Manscaped section of the podcast. It's not even a section, the, the ad, the ad, you know, that's inserted in there that he, you know, records live much to the horror of whoever he's talking with. Like, hey, you know, let's take a, a quick break while I talk about shaving my balls. Yeah. I mean, what what better segue in a podcast to the next topic than... than Call that? me now. 
<laughs> or instead of calling, why don't you just go to manscaped.com and use promo code GNOME. Yeah. There you, you do go. that. There you go. Uh, something that they talked about, they're going to have bo- a bottling line. They're going to be bottling their beers to start, not canning them, which, like you said, ties into the beer that you picked right. for today. Yep. Um, and it was a really it was a really cool conversation about that. Uh, it was when you go to a bottle shop, when you go to jungle gyms, when you go to somewhere with more than just a couple beer options to pick from, what do you see? It's a line of cans. It's all aluminum. It's all, you know, you have the, the coolest design. We built the, the wall. It's a oh wall. My. It's a giant wall. It's a great wall. Is beautiful it wall. Level? It's a beautiful wall of aluminum <laughs> from top to bottom. It's very strong. Very strong packaging. <laughs> very recyclable. It's recyclable. Yes, absolutely. Helps the environment. <laughs> I'm very big, just like so my hands. Yeah. The idea was to go with bottles because there are very few beers anymore that you see in bottles. So when you notice one on the shelf, you're more drawn to it than to... The can can have the coolest design possible, but next to these hundreds of other cans, also with really cool you know, label art, it's hard to, to, to differentiate between them. What beer, what still incredibly popular and sought out beer or you know, brewery do you see in this area that's still in bottles... And that answer was Maine. Common Beer Company. Oh, yeah. No, Maine Beer Company. Maine. That's what I mean. Com- well, if, if I saw Common... Common doesn't distribute. If they, I saw Common but, here at HG, I mean, they, they wouldn't be here anymore because I would buy them all immediately. Yeah, no. Uh, Maine Beer Company. Common doesn't distribute. So, yeah. But uh, when you go in their tap room, you did. can buy bottles. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Maine. And shout out to Common for all the new stainless steel they Hell just had delivered. yeah. Deliver. That picture that uh, the gnome posted, gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, I, gorgeous. I saw it... In it, like in, in the, the in the in the presence, like I, you I were could there. touch the steel. Ah, nice. I need to get back up. Nice. I text need Mark and I was up. like, the stainless looks awesome. You need to text him and say, hey, can you open on a Tuesday for a few hours for us to record and just drink our minds out? I could text him. I mean, <laughs> and we'll he'll be he like, said. he'll be like, eh, we'll not, we'll not really worth the cost of electricity, but thanks for asking. Hey, you never know. Or you never know. There you go. All right, back to Wandering Monster and Cincy Brewcast. Um, the food that they're going to have, because they did talk about it, it's going to be barbecue and yellow mac and cheese. The color of the mac and cheese, very, very important. Listen to this episode to find out why. Uh, then they talked about the name Wandering Monster and where that came from, which you already talked about in the, the beginning of the recap. So we don't have to waste any more time with that, but it was a really cool reasoning behind uh, again because wandering monster it's like well where where did that come from it's not something that's cincinnati or anderson or ohio based how did you get there uh, how did you there, get there anyways never mind the, and again this is something else that, that i mentioned earlier there was not a lot of talk about the duck pin bowling that's going to be a part of the space if it's just because you know let's focus more on the uh, the beer side of the Brewery, even though Jason said multiple times the beer's not going to be the focus. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. I kind of think it would have been interesting to hear a little bit more about about his decision on that and bringing and bringing duck pin bowling into the space and kind of what that entailed and all that. But that's just more of the kind of geeky. Hey, how does this work? You know, kind of side of things. All right. Uh, I actually only had two other notes for this episode. That's um, all I had left. Okay, cool. Let's make sure that they're on the same track. And then I have a multiple choice question. Ah, yes. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, so the last couple notes that I had, uh, seltzers and other things like like ready-to-drink cocktails. Like we Again, you already shared all of our notes pretty much. I'm just kind of retouching on them. Uh, they will be there. There currently aren't plans on making their own seltzers, but you know, not sure if they'll be in cans, on draft, that type of thing. Uh, wine's going to be there. So it really is going to be kind of the one-stop shop that anyone can go to and find something to drink, which is always good. And then Jason said that if you sign up for their newsletter, which I believe you can already sign up at their website, you can get some fun opportunities such as voting on like when they have options for barrels for barrel aging program you can help pick what barrels they get you know little fun stuff like that so That's he's cool. going to try to make it a a fairly customer interactive um, 
saying experience doesn't quite sound right, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Good. They were going to focus on making sure that the customers are a part of what, what the brewery is doing. Great. All right. Well, are you ready for the last part of this, which is the multiple choice question? No, I was born ready, Julia. Hell yeah. All right. They already have a hater, and they're not even open yet. So my multiple choice question is... What is Wandering Monster's first hater mad about? Ooh, ooh this is good. Kind of, kind of hit that one a little early, but that's, that's okay. Good. Is it A, they have no room for pack and plays? Okay. Is it B, there is no shared parking with neighboring businesses? Or is it C, they have no fine dining? Ah, or is it D, <laughs> Julia? I bring the D. <laughs> is it D? Somebody already said, I can't taste the maple. Oh, damn. Where's the maple? Shots fired. Yeah. Kind of. Not really anymore. I don't know. Is Maple Gate still a thing? They eh, said in it. In some circles. <laughs> yeah, they said it. They said it. All right. Well, definitely listen to this episode to hear all about the brand new brewery that is coming to Anderson. A uh, little far for both of us. But Yay. hey, you know what? Support goes out to, uh, to all the local communities. Of course. But of course. That's all that we have That's it. for this episode. That is it. it. So uh, let's go ahead and close this out so that we can keep on drinking and have do a good some, time. and Maybe extra content. Maybe do some extra stuff. If you like what we did tonight, please let us know by liking, reviewing, giving five stars, sharing, telling your friends, your family, your dogs, tell your, your dog's dog sitter, dog walker, right. everyone in the world about our podcast. Tell your kids. Tell your wife. They're going to snatch them all up in here. God, I <laughs> Antoine Dotson. <laughs> Rem- I remember, I remember the name <laughs> and the red handkerchief and yeah. the wife beater. That's right. Uh, yeah, if, if you don't remember that, uh, just just YouTube. Hide your wife. Hide your kids. Yeah. And Fantastic. shout out to the shout out to the Popeyes <laughs> mean kid who got the uh, nil deal in like D three college football. Oh or my god. Oh my goodness. Uh, but yeah, we are <laughs> we are on all of your favorite social media platforms. We are at Truth Beer Pod. If you did not like what we're doing, send all your complaints to at Raging Hop on Twitter, and right. uh, he'll he'll take care of those for you. You can also reach us on uh, on, via email, truthbeerpod at gmail.com. All of our episodes are on YouTube, audio only, but we are working on video, as we've said time and time again. And tonight. And tonight. And tonight, yeah. So check us out on YouTube, truthbeerpod.com, for all the links to all of this stuff. And if you would like to support us and help contribute financially so that I can get a new notebook to keep taking notes. You can do that at one of two places. Uh, TruthBeerPod.com has a one-time donation link on it, or you can become a Patreon subscriber and get access to some behind-the-scenes content. We're going to be doing some exclusive videos, unedited episodes, all kinds of good stuff. That is Patreon.com slash, get ready for this, TruthBeerPod. We We try to stay consistent. Yeah. Throughout everything that we do. But thank you so very much for for being with us again on this amazingly fun journey. We can't wait to see you again next week. But Marco. Julia. What are you going to be doing next Tuesday? I'm going to be here at our podcast host, Higher Gravity, talking about all the Cincinnati-based craft beer podcasts that came out this week. Sounds great. Cheers. I'll see you there. Yeah.